I think I'm unmuted. There we go. Hey, hey! Now we're back. Welcome <laughs> back, ladies and gentlemen, to round two of this SCG 5K hosted by Nerd Rage Gaming. I'm your host, Andrew Donnelly, with me, my co-host, Matt Hausler. What's going and on? we're going to get back into the booth here. We've got Esper Control, piloted by Alex Pressig, against Josh McLean here, playing Abzan Agro. Man, sweet Obnixilis sleeves, bro. Yeah, dude. I like it. I like it. I'm a fan. Alex Presick here, one of oh, our man. regulars. Come on, you got to know him. If you if you know anything about the stream, you know Alex Presick. I I do know Alex Presick. Yeah, uh, I've <laughs> I've watched him play. Uh, yep. I, I've lived with him. Sure. Um, I've hung out with him a few times even. Yeah, every uh, now and then. That's true. You know, we you we know, we do see him. We, we, yeah, we chill. We he, chill. He's around. We talk about magic. That you is know, also it's, true. It's a thing. And I like the fact that he's playing Esper Control. I I know you do. I've. Are you not a fan? I've. I've liked other decks he's played more than this one. Sure, sure. But, you know, whatever he likes, whatever he's winning with, more power to him. Those are some sweet Obnob sleeves. You weren't kidding, I man. I know, dude. They are awesome. I know. They got that, like, base white. I like but it. But it's Obnixless. Yeah, but it's Obnixless. So you know what it's about. Contradicting. So who do you who do you prefer in this matchup? You like that Abzan a little bit more than the Esper Control, huh? Uh, as an aggro deck, I like it more. Um... You know, uh, we've we've kind of seen um, aggro decks do fairly well against control decks, at sure. least in game one. Uh, assuming Josh has the right mixture of things to just go through Alex before he can really do anything. Yeah. Um, a turn one warden of the first tree, pretty good start. Um, it looks like we've got abs and charm as well, which will help us out a, quite a bit. Uh, I believe I saw wingmate rock as well. So I mean. If we can curve out here, I think we can put pressure on Alex. Now, looking at Alex's main deck, I see some interesting things. As I obviously put together Esper Control for Noah Cohen to play today, mm -hmm. I see that he actually decided to include Dragonlord Silmgar in the main. Yeah. Which is something that I talked to Noah about last night. Now, Noah was under the impression that um, Eshrin Cleric was a little bit better here. Okay. But uh, it, I do like Dragonlord Silumgar. An Erish and Cleric over a Dragonlord Silumgar. Correct, as our as our one main board that, creature. That seems like apples over oranges. Kind of, yeah. But I, I see what you're saying. Uh, one favored against a certain type of deck. Right. Whereas the other is just in line with the control strategy. We're going to see a Warden connect for one. Just one. No nope. option with Jace here to block. Nothing too crazy? No, I mean, we don't want to lose Jace. I think we all know how good Jace is when it gets to live and transform and recast your spells. Definitely. It's going to start looting now for Alex. A little background on uh, Josh McLean here. He's been playing since the uh, Time Spiral block. Uh, did a lot of MTGO grinding early on. Uh, but so far, pretty good resume. He got a second place finish at uh, GP Miami and a first place finish at GP Detroit. Wow. Dang. Yeah, GP, right De GP Detroit. That was like a Wild West Saloon GP it. down there. <laughs> Anything goes. Anything goes. People are playing <laughs> Dig Through Times. And yeah. No, Absolutely. That was, a, that was a good GP. And again, the man knows his sleeves. I, I like those sleeves. One, I think they're think, solid. Do you think he got those from uh, from winnings? From his uh, GP winnings? There's possible winning, yeah. Because sure. that makes him even better. I mean, You think so? Yeah, he earned those sleeves. If you I think, think they look it. sweet, man. Alex Preston going to go ahead and pass the turn here. McLean, land drop number three is a planes... Play number three, potentially, in Anafenza the Foremost. Uh, or don't have black, yeah? Uh, no, no nothing we do not. To, nothing to complete black here. We'll so not be in We might be foremost. on this Warden plan, in we all might, honesty. We might have a 3-3 Warden uh, bite the dust to one of many of Alex Preston's main deck removal spells. Uh, <laughs> the bluff is on, and once again, Warden connects for one. Going to drop down to 17 for Alex. Ebzan Agro, the number one best performing deck in the NRG feature match area. Sure. Out of 30 matches played, it has a 70% win rate. I th Thanks, I'm, Ben Sliwa. I'd like to think Ben Sliwa has a lot to do with that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look, it's Snapping Gnarled. There we go. That's what that card's called, yeah? It that is. is. Snapping I can't Gnarled, even yeah. believe it. A, just a, you know, nice little landfall bear. Did we go ahead and eat that Snapping Gnarled with a Scatter the Winds? We scattered it. Jeez. We scattered it to the Winds. Alex Pressing wants to fill up that yard. He's got a dig in hand, so he wants to start looking for answers. Dragonlord Silumgar, too, in hand. Oh, yeah. 
I mean, once he gets there, he's he can lock this game out pretty hard. Yeah, I like this deck. Oh, Reed Duke definitely uh, uh, backing Esper Control in this Mage Ring Network strategy yeah. of getting a Mage Ring out, pumping it up so we can uh, play an Ugin a little bit more successfully. Yeah. Oh, yeah, hey. Uh, an Ugin before turn eight is solid. Pretty good by me. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, absolutely. So Josh just decided to do small work here with this uh, this warden. Maybe yeah, the really. Fact that he's off black mana. There's a Dramoka's command. Yeah, we're gonna respond to the loot here. And now all of a sudden that scatter the winds looks really good. Though we do have no Jutai's command, so I think Alex is gonna go ahead and let this slide. Oh. Warden of the first tree is gonna get a counter. Counter fight successful. No flip Jace for you. In but this? a Jutai's command says, I'll get Jace back. He's got to loot and loot. resolve the effect still. Yep. We find Silumgar's command. We've got a pair of commands. We've got our Dragon Lord and Savior. Wow. Do we have a chance here to and both a Jutai's command at end of turn and then Silumgar's command during our main phase? Yeah. Because that does a lot for us. We can put Josh back a land uh, as well as potentially kill his creature. It's not bad. So we're going to pitch our Dragon Lord Interesting. in favor of hanging on to a dig through time with Jutai's command, Silumgar's command. Yeah. I, I, I agree. Jason will return. Seems pretty good. I believe we'll probably also just gain four life here. Nope, drawing a card. It's all right. You know, it's it's okay. You're not a blue player, I'm so not, gaining I, gaining four life seems like the correct play. I see play. an aggro deck. And but if I you see a blue life. card and it says draw a card, I, guess, I think we I, should draw. I, no, it's whatever. And this shows know. you the power of a Jutai's command, allowing Alex to just essentially null the uh, the Dramoka's command, bring back his Jace, and then just flip it right here. So this is a great line for Alex. God, Jace, Jace is freaking good. Jace is flippy flip. <laughs> What a good card. I mean, disgustingly though. Most. Chase is unbound. Oh, dude, he's nuts. He's the living guild pack, baby. You can't stop him. Well, that's not the living guild pack. <laughs> we wish it was. <laughs> it should have been, but it's should've, not. Yeah, it should have been. It's a sweet name for a for a, just a thing. Oh, the artwork is beautiful on that card, by the way. I, I mean, on all these Jaces. Sure. Magic artists, keep doing what you're doing. Looks like Jace is aiming to shrink Warden. Yep. And uh, I believe that'll do it. Josh going to draw. Is it a black source? It is not. Nor does it have the potential of finding us a black source. Jeez. So Josh, under the pressure here from the Abzan mana base, and then a standard where we think finding the cards is fairly good for us. I'd like to think 90% of the time your mana goes pretty smoothly if you sequence it correctly. So he can find a sunken hollow here. No, he's okay. Oh, he's got a hollow? All right, yeah, yeah. yeah right. I, I'm assuming he's playing a hollow because you have to run that. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, sure, sure. All right. Blue Abzan. Jeez, Matt. Abzan Come aggro. on, Matt. Flooded I, Strand into uh, flooded Strand into Sunken Hollow. Come on. It's it just seems wrong to Child me that play. Flooded Strand can find the black mana, a, a swamp. Yeah, yeah. but I I know. But I can use my Flooded Strand to find like a I don't know it's, Underground it's, Sea. It's where we are right now. Yeah, of course you can. Because <laughs> <laughs> cards bananas. <laughs> cards bananas. No, it makes sense because oh jeez. Because the blue blue is an allied color of black. I I got it. The color pie. It makes the color sense. pie, baby. This is a dig through time. Know your color pie if you're going to commentate. So Josh deciding not to go with the warden, obviously. Not going to do a whole bunch of damage. And this will allow Alex to kind of find some answers. He finds an Ugin of Jutai's command that looks like a bunch of land. It's one card selected. Is that a Tassiger too? Does he run a Tassiger main board? What is this I nonsense? that's murderous cut. Oh, okay. We've had this discussion before. Oh, he does run an Omnixilis main board, though. Spicy. That's pretty spicy. That's what we'd like to see. Ob going up against Ob Dang, sleeves. Dude. No, I believe that's a murderous cut, though. Yeah? It, yeah. yeah, murderous cut would be correct. We've had this discussion. We did. They, they, do they both look, look super <laughs> similar. They look quite similar. There's a fetch for Alex. He's going deep. Going to find potentially a uh, blue-black, a blue-white. Yeah. Or maybe just a basic swamp or island. Uh, so, I don't know. Gosh, it's uh, whatever his prerogative is. I mean, like find sunken. If I'm you know, if I'm Alex like and I'm not stream. actually like playing against the opponent and trying to win, I'm like just flashback and dig through time here. Just sure. like I'll just flash this back real quick. Go find two more answers to your deck. Sure. So that's how control works. Yeah, I see. Okay. Kind of. It's it's kind of making sense to me more now, <laughs> as I as I see it play. Yeah. Uh, it, it draws cards, and yes. you can literally uh, deal with anything. Yes. I, I see. Right. I right. see. Now. So that's okay. the way you play. Yeah. I no, gotcha. Right. 
Uh, so that's going to be a languish. Going to yeah. sweep up both the Anafenza and the Warden of the first tree. Seems all right. Jace going to tick up, choosing nothing. Seems strong which and relevant, is, which we are allowed to do, <laughs> thanks to the convenient wording of up to. Oh, look who made an appearance, though. Dr. Siegenton, he hasn't been around quite often. He's clear for launch. Might yeah, as well. I, I don't think we're worried about uh, Essence Scatter here, as that card is not standard legal. I can't imagine we're... Uh, and also, we're Alex Pressig does not have double blue. Is, isn't that like a cardinal sin? Of it, it is kind of a control? cardinal sin, not having double blue up. But if, if you notice, he's yes. going for that major ring network play. He is. You'll see an Ouge here. Yeah, that'll be a good... We're uh, looking for Ouge. Man, we've also got Haven in hand, too. For God, that's that's pretty good with Ouge. It is pretty good with Ouge. He also finds a negate off the top, just casually drawing the negate. Negate seems also very good here. We're only at seven mana, though. We have seven mana. Got to find a way to stave off the siege. We have now. three cards in hand. Uh, and I don't think any of them really handedly deal with siege rhino. Even an uptick of Jace here... No, but we have the flashback ability. Oops. Yeah, but what are we flashing back? Uh, we've, we've got Languish or Jutai's Command, I think. Oh, well, that's true. Maybe a Dig Through Time, but I don't know. I think we're taking some damage here from this. So uh, you just want to go up on Jace? That's fine. I think so, Whatever. yeah. Let's make it a 2-5. No, just, just a nice little 2-5 Rhino. A nice little 2-5 Rhino that dealt us 3 when it came in. That's a fair rate. It's fine. Josh going to get aggressive with the Rhino, though. Wingmate Rock online here. Yeah, that's that's something. He's walking it into all the open man in the yeah, world. Yeah, he is. You but be uh, careful. unknown to him, it would stick. Should so he? Interesting. Uh, Why does he not want to attack with the rhino? The two damage seems perfectly relevant. It's it's a free attack. Yeah, like you said, what are, what are we playing around here? I'm not sure. I don't know if he's trying to calculate. Oh, he's got an Abzan charm too, so he might be looking for a way to kind of do some additional damage. Hmm. I don't know if I'm sticking Abs and Charm on my Rhino, though. Not against the control deck? No. Sure. No, I think I just want to draw cards. Kind of outdo them in card advantage. Yeah. Looks like Rhino's going to connect. Going to Alex's life total. As Jace seems uh, pretty active here. Okay. Additional Anafenza. Anafenza, not bad. Just adding more fuel to this board. I think that's a safe line from Josh, allowing us to keep the wingmate rock back. He might have been afraid here. This could be like just a bait to see if there's a counter. Sure. So we're going to sacrifice the Haven, get back Dragonlord Silumgar, and now I see the line from Alex, and the line seems good. Is it play Silumgar and I'd steal a creature? Take your inoffensive. <laughs> yeah, that seems pretty good. What did we draw off the top? Prairie Stream Prairie. coming out of hand. God, this... How people don't like this format is kind of beyond me. Besides the price entry point, I think, I think that's the so sweet. I think that's the sole reason people don't like really? this format. Really? Just that? Yeah. The, sure. The sheer price entry. Other than that, lots of power being thrown around here. Oh, I, I think it's great. A lot of great decision making and you know challenges. No, the the meta is pretty wide open. In terms of deck choices, uh, you know, we haven't seen Jeskai Black here at all. We haven't, not Granted, yet. we've only seen four decks, but so we're, I, we're seeing just as many other decks. I don't like this play. Taking Siege Rhino. I, he, he decided to... He decided to plus Jace, targeting the Inoffensa, and then Dragonlord to take your Siege Rhino. Sure. Would I would have? rather have taken the Inoffensa sure. and make it so that all of Josh's creatures... And when they die, are just exiled completely. Sure. Like, that seems much better for us. Heaven forbid he has some way to get these creatures back. Right. Uh, like, it just seems like a safer line. Now, we might have taken the Siege Rhino because we can get the Trample, but, like... Yeah, I think it, it just trades, you know, trades higher up than Anafenza does. Yeah. As it's 4-5. Uh, sure. Uh, this is going to get awkward, though. Oh, boy. There's an Agate. Now, he might have a Dramokus Command, though. Yeah, so Alex Pressig, great sequence of turns there for him, though. Yeah, I mean, he, for sure. he was able to steal a creature, whether or not we thought it was the right creature or not. Still had negate up for a removal spell. Definitely. Oh man, and he's got the Solomgar's command in hand. So I, I guess I misspoke when I said that he should have played the Wingmate Rock. He only had to enter the battlefield tap lands, so he wasn't yeah. on the the 
the correct line he needed there. Keep forgetting we make rots uh, five and five not drop. Four. Yeah. yeah. I mean, granted, it's a great five drop, but yeah, yeah very yeah, much. You so. still need five mana to cast it. So Alex gonna go for the dig here. Gonna start taking cards out of his yard. Does he still see? This is what I'm worried about. Is it looks like he's gonna tap out. He still has the Silumgar's command in hand, correct? I believe so. Yeah. So like, I'd want to leave the mana up where we're able to cast the Silumgar's command. Sure. Unless yeah, he has like a clash or another negate or something in hand. Looks like we're disputing the payment on this dig still. And looks like we're all happy. All right, everyone's good. So we're seeing some other ends. We're seeing some uh, anticipate, like anticipate Jutai's Command, Surge, Surge of Righteousness. righteousness. That seems yeah. good here. It seems pretty good. That card has targets. Uh, what else are we going to take? Another Jutai's Command, perhaps? We do have another counter in hand as well. It's a horribly awry, though. Hits three only, right? Three and above? Three and below. Three and below? Yeah. Ooh. I believe. Horribly awry. Come on, man. You're the blue huh? guy. I'm sorry, man. Well, I'm doing your job for you. Let's take a peek. Horribly awry. Counter target creature spell only with converter mana cost four or less. Yeah, four so that's less, right. that's not the that's not the spell that I want here. Yeah, no. No, I would agree with you. So other end will get it done for us though. Uh but this is what I was worried about was this Dramokas command. Yeah, but, oh, but we, we do have, we, we do have, have the mana for Silumgar. We have utter end. What are we utter ending? Just utter end and offensa. There you go. Oh, sure. Okay. There you go. That's what you want to do. That's fine. That's all right. That's Every, fine. Yeah, everybody's all upset. Your counter and your fight does nothing. We couldn't Silumgar's command? Like, Silumgar's command, counter it, bounce a land? Sure. You could have. You could have done that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're finally going to stick a removal spell onto on Dragon Lord yeah. Silumgar. <laughs> that took a while. We got our Siege Rhino back, though. Yeah. Alex able to uh, deal... Four damage. Pretty hefty chunk. Through a Siege Rhino. Drew Not a, the best. Drew another Jace. That's but a little awkward. But it's something. Another Jace, why not? Jace going to utter end the other Rhino. Yep. Thanks, Jace. Thanks for letting me replay my already awesome spells again. Again. Yeah. And that'll do it for Alex. Still holding up a uh, horribly awry. In Clash of Wills. Clash of Wolves is all right here. I think that card's pretty strong. As Josh has been struggling on finding land number six, yeah, as well as finding an opportune time to drop these, uh, you know, these threats in his hand. Well, now I think the only threat left is Wingmate. Yep. And that's going to get hard to drop if we want the value off of it. Like we can't activate Shambling Vent, attack with Shambling Vent, and, and then, play, then play the Wing. Yeah, that's true. Uh, like just turning on the vent right now seems fun. You don't like just having a three-four with flying. For five minutes. Uh, not when I have a shambling vent that I can activate. My opponent has to have removal for it right then, and I can potentially start getting it in life gaining. You know what I mean? Sure. So it looks like he sees that as well as we're just going to activate shambling vent. It looks like. Don't know he has anything else in his hand, really. I mean, I just feel like that's this, that's the line. Like, we might as well get in on this Jace, gain some life while we can, right? Yeah, that's something. Now Jace can't do any trickery, he can't flash anything back. Right. Just going to simply have to uptick. Can't target the Shambling Vent, because it's a land again. Dang! Got me. <laughs> Sorry, Jace. Here comes an Ooge, though. Oh, but this is good. Here comes a repeatable Lightning Bolt. That seems good. That seems strong. Are we, uh... We playing Ruinous Path? I don't think so. No, no, no. I don't think I don't think that's a card we're worried Do about. Do we have Butter End? No, uh, I don't think so. Josh down to fourteen. Yeah, I, I think we're just hoping Combat can take care of an Ugin here, and uh, when you have no creatures on the battlefield, yeah, that seems that bad. Seems bad. That, that seems like it can go terribly, that, horribly awry. In fact, see, it could. Yeah. See, that's such a great name for a card. Oh, the card has a great name. I'm not sure it 
I'm just not sure it's a counter spell that counters a small creature. Yeah. Player. Well, yeah, four or it less. It seems like it should be like a bigger blowout card than that as things have gone horribly awry. No, the bigger blowout card, you get a sweet name for, and it's called Scour from Existence. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that's, a, that's a name. There you go. That's just what? Exile a permanent? Exile a permanent. Seven mana. Seven mana. <laughs> Common. And it's a it's Instant. a picture of an Eldrazi just blowing something away. <laughs> I do I do like that card. That's yes. a sweet card. It is a sweet card. Ooh. There's a there's a Jidian. This is pretty sweet. Jiddy getting giddy. Here can comes I, the giddy token, baby. Can I get us a, a little oh, ally oh, friend. But we've still got this Silumgar's command in hand. We sure do. Jace is, is ticking on up as well. Looks like we're going to shrink that knight ally. All right, if you Silmgar's command right here, what would you do? If I Silmgar's command? Yeah, if you Silmgar's command right now is Alex. Oh, we're going to destroy Gideon. Gideon. Kill Gideon, bounce that. And, oh. and bounce a vent? Oh, no, no. Oh, we're, we're, we're ultimate pricing a token. token. Oh, oh well, Josh, Josh going to scoop anyway. it up. All right. I would have killed Gideon, bounce the, the shambling, shambling vent. vent. Sure. It's so good. That's Who fine. cares about the 2-2? Two -two? Jace can keep that thing on lock. It's true. It's all right. The damage was done. It was. Alex is going to take game one on the back of some repeatable instants and sorceries, Esper a Dragon's giant eight mana planeswalker, uh, and some other shenanigans where he was able to get a Jace back and play the uh, Jace again. Yeah, uh, blue magic, blue magic. Blue man, yeah. Look at me, look at me. Yeah, that's fine. Seems real fun. Understandable. Understandable. All right, let's hit the sideboards up. You got Josh's, right? I got I Alex's. You you go rock that one real All quick. All right. Well, I, I already see some some juicy options here. All right. Josh has two duress. Sure, sure. Two transgress the mines. Yep. Bring them in. One Soren, solemn visitor. Okay. Yeah, maybe. It's well, not a bad option. Yeah. Two self inflicted wounds. I think we can leave those home for now. Uh, three silk wrap. Yeah. They deal with Jace. Yeah. They deal with Jace. You have sure. to deal with Jace. Sure, silk wraps. Okay. We also have two ultimate price to deal with Jace. Yep. One uh one surge of righteousness. Okay. Yeah, I could probably leave that at home. Oh. And two Tassiger, Golden Fang. Tassiger's a sweet card. I think we gotta bring in Tassiger. I think we gotta bring in our hand attack, okay. duress, transgress the mind. Um Yeah, I mean Silk Wrap's great for dealing with Jace, but sure. that's your only target really. So I mean I mean that's if that's I, what it's as, there for. Right? As the control player or sure. playing against the control deck, in my experience it seems like they always get a Jace. So one so, way or another. I think I'd bring it in, actually, yeah. just to deal with Jace. Okay. Um, but then again, I mean, Ocho Jai's Command, uh, you know, all these different ways he can probably deal with our Silk Wrap. Sure. Uh, it's rough. I I don't know. I, I think I agree part of me you. just wants him to s remain an aggro deck and uh, try and win fast. I think, I think you were correct in saying that uh, taking the aggro route yeah. plus the hand attack is where we want to be. Yeah, I actually like bringing in the Taskers because it gives us a larger body and a way to recur some of our hand attack. Sure. Or even potentially some of our, uh, you know, other cards. So yeah, I, I mean, I think, it, you're, I think this, you're on point. He's a potential three drop. I mean, right. If we have three fetches, you know, and and then yeah, like you said, against control, uh, card advantage, everything. So for Alex's sideboard here, oh man, we've got two Erish and clerics. One Scatter to the Winds, one Hollowed Moonlight, one Dispel, one Languish, one Painful Truth, sweet card, one Silumgar the Drifting Death, or Dragon Lord and Savior, Dragon Lord of Jutai, one Virulent Plague, three Duress, and two Monastery Mentors. Ooh, oh, baby. Dirty. Oh, if I'm Alex here, I don't know what I... I mean, Painful Truth seems sweet. An additional languish seems sweet. Yep. Hollowed Moonlight, I, I I don't really like for this deck. Scatter to the Wind, I think I'm okay with bringing in over if we have just one main board horribly awry. I think I'd rather play Scatter, because it's good even late game to provide us with a creature if necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's about it. I don't know if I can make a case for the Duresses or not. I, yeah, I don't think they're necessary. I don't think you want him against I, an I aggro do, deck. Did I say Dragon Lord or Jutai? Did I say bring him in? I, I don't know. I I'd bring him he, in. I, I think he would, he's yeah. nuts. He's a, he's a clock that is super hard to deal with. Absolutely. Especially when we look at the sideboards here, and McLean uh, apparently took out four Dramokas commands, one mean rate rot, and one cut. Alright. 
so, like, yeah, just... Dragon Lord Juta is coming in immediately because now we know that our our opponent's ways of instantly dealing with the creature mm -hmm. have, have dropped. At least we do. I don't know if Alex does, but... Yeah, I mean, it looks like Alex... Uh, he took out Obnixilis, some, you know, two Clash of Wills, one Horribly Awry, one Negate, one Dispel. Yeah. So, yeah, he's... I think he's on the, the path we talked about. Uh, I like bringing Ojutai. You know, God, Ojutai's good. <laughs> bringing Painful Truth, Languish. You know. Painful Truth, also a, a highly underrated card. If you notice, Painful Truth and Radiant Flames, mm -hmm. both really good cards right now in the format. Like, yeah. super good cards. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, man. Pressig brought in the Ojutai. We have confirmation. Uh, Dragonlord and Savior has entered the building. Wonderful. And As both expected. players, unfortunately, going down to six, though. So why don't we main deck Ojutai is, is the question I have just immediately off the top uh, of my head. So I think the reason Alex probably <laughs> takes Dragonlord Silumgar main deck in the place of Ojutai mm -hmm. is that Silumgar can, can close out a game very quickly. If our opponent decides to make one giant creature or has a creature that definitely threatens us, sure. this allows us to instantly take it and kind of swing favor. Uh, where Dragonlord or Jutai is great, once you land him and you're in a stable position, mm -hmm. he will inevitably end the game. Yeah. Right? He's a four sure. turn clock that is going to put you card advantage ahead, so. Yeah. That's, that's fair, I suppose. Looks like both players going to six. Deciding now if they'd like to keep or not. Painful Truth is not in the sideboard, so I'm assuming that means that Pressing brought it in. In his main deck? Yeah, he must have. Yeah, no no painful truth in the main, one in the side. Josh going down to five, though. Press is going to stay with his six. So this is... This is a painful five for Josh, I'd have to imagine. Yeah, it's not great. And he's on the play, which the aggro deck wants, but to not be able to draw a card... And potentially uh, have the wrong one. mana, like we saw yeah. in game one. Like, it was it was a long time before we found that additional uh, black source. Yeah, it's a very real consideration. Uh, but hey, you know, seven wasn't good. Six wasn't good. Got to ship it back. Yeah, yeah. Josh definitely knows more about the game than I do. I just want to point that out. So, if he mulls, there's probably a good reason <laughs> he's, for he's it. Got, he's, got the, he's got the starts here. He's won, he's yeah. won a GP. Oh. He's coming second for another GP. He does not like his scry option. I imagine it's something to do with land and the appropriate numbers of it. Sure. Going to lead with a shambling vent. Does Ooh, he have land? Shambling land? vents? <laughs> land number two is a plains. Ooh, duress. Duress. Old school. Is that a mirage? Duress. Uh, please. Is it a mirage? I thought that was. Did Urza's have different Ur Urza. land? It might be I don't know. Urza's. It's, let's go to the board. We're going to find out for duress. Let's go to the board. Oh my god, there's so many artworks. Yeah. That's a great... Yeah, that's the Urza Saga art. Yeah, you know, this it, Urza Saga artwork, we're not we're not dropping back all the way to 7th edition to Well, rest. no, because that's <laughs> whiteboarded and bleh. With the, <laughs> with the paladins duking it out. Get that stuff out of here. So what do we take? <laughs> I don't know. I was too oh, busy Glare, looking at yeah, other versions of Duress. They're killing us on Alex's side. I, I want to say it looks like Surge of Righteousness. Surge of Righteousness, yeah. okay. So I think Josh is on the plan of trying to run this, uh, no, run this Sora now. Yeah, it's a good keep, uh, as it's the only form of early interaction. God, we drew a Siege Rhino too. That seems good. Dastardly. That's gonna start us off here. How expressive though. Uh, I he's, got he's got Shambling got Vent, Island, uh, Fetch, Fetch, Ojutai's command this in is hand. A siege Rhino. We have no counter magic for he's it. He's got a Painful Truths. He's got a he's got a Silumgar in hand as well. Twenty two to sixteen right now after the fetch. So it looks like Josh McLean, definitely a, uh, a modern player here, as his GP win was with Maliripod, and his GP runner up was with Junk Rights. So man knows his Abzan. Right on. I mean, good for him, yeah. Like hey. find, finding a, a color combo he likes. Yes. And when it just happens to be good, I mean. And you just crush stuff with it's it. It's money. Yeah. So I agree. Unfortunately, you know, I like just black. So <laughs> just mono black. That's that's a while removed from your, being where, something in standard or, where your or any champions format. at, bro? I still got them. Yeah. I still I got like my blood. Card's good. 
I, I, they're they're getting some play in my uh, in my deck right now. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I had to splash blue, of course, because yep. you know value. Yep. Need good stuff. So Alex, kind of under the gun here. Yeah, for a mold of five, uh, Josh is Jeez. putting these things together pretty well. This is painful. Uh, this can Soren can't land if you're Alex. Yeah, we cannot counter this Soren with our Ojutai's command. And uh, really all we have right now is a, I believe that's a Surge of Righteousness to uh, deal with this Rhino. Maybe not, though, as he's just taking the five damage with lifelink. Alex going to go down to 11, Josh up to 27 after the attack. going to play event. We have Jace. I believe we're dropping Jace. When in doubt, right? Drop when in doubt. Jace. Play your Jace. Hope it works. We do have a planar outburst in hand. That's not bad. Like you said, though, it doesn't really deal with the... Uh... It's currently a one-for-one. One. Right. Well, actually, he two-for-ones himself as Jace is still a creature, but uh, priorities, I mean, it's all about living in... Uh, Gaining control in the late game. Well, so. this Jace might end up blocking a little bit here. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think you might have to. Now. This is this is going to be a pretty good attack. That's a hefty eight coming in at Alex. Also with lifelink. Yep. And yeah, I mean, I, I assume Jace is blocking something here. Man, this was a great mole for Josh. Yeah, he I really mean, he really it, good mole. He put it together. I mean, he found. Five lands, yeah, and quality threats. You know, he found a one drop and and four drops. Yeah, but Alex hasn't really done much this game. Which I mean, he's got action in his hand. Yeah, Josh just, just isn't letting off the gas to let him do anything with it. Sure. Like we can't cast the painful truce now because we're in this situation where we're taking so much damage. Yep, we're gonna take an additional five here from the Rhino. G six and, to thirty five, and block shambling vents. It's not looking good for us in the old Esper control corner. Yeah, it's it's weird. I mean, he, you know, he went to six, and I, you know, thought it was good enough. Yeah. And, but yeah, like you said, just I so guess it's not. Here's a double fetch. Alex going down to four. Not a whole lot of interaction for him this game, as a uh, Singleton Rhino and Soren are just doing the work. I think there's something to be said. If Josh has only one card in hand, like Alex can planar outburst here, kill the Rhino. Or yeah. if we have spot removal, we kill the Rhino, make Josh either commit another threat to the board. The problem is, is he can actually just activate the Shambling Shell next turn, even yeah. if we board wipe and kill us. Yeah, so exactly. we have to find some way to get rid of the Rhino and then some way to keep up removal for the Shambling vent? Yeah. So, again, this all comes back to that turn one duress where we took Surge of Righteousness. Yeah. Oh, super good I mean, right now. Oh. If, not, if not hitting the Rhino, it hits the Shambling Vent as well. But, yeah, we're just going to... We're, we're just going for a roadblock here in the form of Silumgar. I think I think not this bad. is... 3-7 Flyer with, uh, with Death Touch. The problem... Oh, no, he doesn't have enough. He's one mana off. I thought he could, I thought he could activate the Shambling Vent and then also Abzan Charm... Said shambling vent to get the kill in, but we're short just one land. Slumgar the Drifting Death, baby. He's no joke. That's a 3 7 flying oh, hexproof. Hexproof, yeah, that's right. Also, he shrinks when you attack yeah. with him or any other dragon. I've never actually seen that happen. Like, Slumgar attack with Plus another dragon else. to minus two, minus two a team. That'd be so good, though. It would be good. It'd be Some dirty. Someone brew it. As for dragons, him and Ojutai. Oh, Oop. Alex flipping his card, flew one off the table. And I think Josh is trying to figure out a way where he can get in additional damage here. Now, there is a there is a scenario where Josh just decides to kill the Silumgar, mm -hmm. where he attacks with the Siege Rhino plus his Soren, and then if Alex blocks, he can Abzan Charm the Rhino. Sure. I mean, it's still a huge, huge... So this, yeah... Yeah. Now, if Alex blocks, which he most likely will as he has to stay alive. Has to. Here's Abzan Charm to plus counters. Our Silumgar dies. We we gain just a gratuitous amount of life off this lifelink. Yep. Josh now up to 42. Jeez. Doesn't even attack with fence. 
He doesn't need. He, he, <laughs> he, I guess he couldn't. He couldn't activate the vents and then attack and then right. try to get in. Alex gonna scoop it up. Josh gonna pick up game number two here, and we'll move into our uh, first game number three. No, there were. I guess yeah. round one went to game three too. It did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's all good, man. It's all man, good, dude. This is. That's what you like. I'm already deep in it, baby. We're deciding this in three, man. I like every it. time. I mean, and both these players really skilled. I mean, that that mulligan couldn't have gone better for Josh. I mean, oh, yeah. That was, he, that was super well played off. Yeah, he, he came out of it well. And what was important is that the threats he found were just... Really just, relevant. Yeah, just yeah. relevant against what Alex had in his hand. I mean, sometimes that's just how a game breaks. And I felt like Alex did have a lot of power in his hand. Just he had no time to cast it. Just Sure. There was never a point where he could take a turn off and be like, well, yeah, painful truth seems good here. Let me go ahead and shoot myself for three, draw three cards, and oh, God, there's like a, a five, six siege I'm rhino I'm or still something. Yeah, still dealing with these pesky rhinos. These gosh this, darn rhinos. This pesky one of rhino, actually. <laughs> the the singular actuality. rhino backed up by Soren. Yeah. Who is seeing a very small amount of play for how good I feel he is right now. Oh, he's a great card. I mean, we see him in, you know, the token decks, the things that kind of go wide and mask the field with 1-1s one -ones that sure. suddenly become 2-1s with lifelink. Right. Yeah, that seems pretty that good. That seems okay. That seems pretty good to me. Uh, but, I mean, here, you know, a great a great utility I mean, it's an against... Anth the anthem effect, right? It's an anthem, and, yeah. you know, it's, in a pinch, he provides a body for you. That's true. I mean, it's, it's a pretty good utility against, uh, you know, these control decks when you can kind of back him into a corner. His ult has to be ridiculous against the green-white Megamorph. I mean, it has to just be super, super good, right? It's the Abyss, isn't it? At, I think at the his, I think his upkeep, ultimate's sack a creature? pretty much good against any deck that plays creatures. Like, yeah, I, but sure. Yeah, like, I don't know, that card, we run that out. Yeah, I mean, he's, his ultimate is kind of a classic example of, you're probably already winning anyway. Let's just shut the door now. And, right, original yeah. Planeswalker Ultimate kind of thing. Yeah. Let me just make sure you can't have a board state right. while I continue to beat well, you down yeah. because I've plus the Soren four so times many already. times. Yeah. I, I'm up to 42 health. Uh, I now have an Abyss token. Uh, yeah. You're dead. <laughs> Do you scoop? Right. Because I'll keep playing if you don't want to just scoop. Alt isn't very good against Hangerback Walker, is what our uh, what our table judge just notified us. But you know what? I haven't seen a lot of Hangerback Walkers today. I, Where are the Hangerbacks? I show me the Hangerbacks. I haven't seen one yet. Show me the show me the walking hangers. I want to see them. I mean, yeah, no, that's fine. There there are decks that play things that want their creatures to die. That's fair. Giving them a sack outlet is great. But you're still probably at like 42 life, right? And are going wide anyway. But in either case, we saw Soren do some work there. I imagine it's still in the main deck here for I would, Josh. I would think so. I, I doubt Josh would take it out. The card was really good. Alex is really giving his sideboard consideration for he this is. game. Three. I'm, I'm wondering if we could get an update from the table on what exactly he's so. I guess caught up in. I wonder sure. what he was really looking at there, and it may be that he's decided that the counter package is actually really still what, good. what staved yeah. off game one threats. So that would make sense to me. Um, yeah, because losing to one Rhino and seems one, bad. One Soren's not great. So Josh didn't switch up anything in his sideboard. He he's currently still running the cards that we we saw him bring yeah. in for. That's for game and that's one. fair and that's fine. I mean. Now he's on the play, so he still has an aggressive package to work with. Yep. And if, for whatever reason, he can't get it done early, he's got tools to do it late. And yeah, I think I think you call it. I think Alex Presick is is back on the the counter Let's spell try plan. And counter spell. I mean, Alex is on the play now, so that then the counters make more sense. Yeah. So Presick took out two languishes and brought in two clash of wills, which seems. Pretty strong. Yeah, just yeah, more counter spells. Seems like what we want. I would say so. Both players going over the hands. It looks like they're both happy. Pressing turn one island. Gotta what? Get, gotta love it. You think he's gonna drop a second island? Just pump fake the Silmgars? That'd be intense. I'm not gonna lie. Josh McLean gonna turn one right. Lanowar way so, so he can play a warden. 
Well, he showed he, he sho- showed he the canopy vista, showed canopy, but decided that instead we want to get out the aggressive warden first, which is fine. Uh, that's fair, but I think the issue here is that yeah, he's he's got some number of fetch and all you know like already has a battle land in hand. Right. So now it's okay. Well, do I have to fetch a a basic here, or can I just get away with playing battles into play taps? It's sure. This is this is the standard we're in now, where there is no real clear answer to just find two basics first, or or so, sometimes you kind of have to, you know, right, just just take a take an untap land and have it come into play tapped for you. So here's an attack. Yeah. So so that was the sequencing. I think that was correct here. As um, on turn three, we can play our our battle land tapped, but we still are able to pump our warden. And we got Gnarled out for turn two. So it, question, it's, it's a little awkward, but it got stuff done. Is is Alex going to have removal for this? You know what I mean? This is yeah, where the language comes in handy. God, Surge of Righteousness can't hit either of these creatures. Jeez. Snapping Gnarled, man. What are, what are the chances of things like, like two games in a row break where your opponent's answers do not actually line up hit, with oh, what yeah. you happen to have in your I hand? I think that's more so in standard than anywhere else. Yeah, it's... It's a bit of a bad break here for Alex. Um, you know, he's palming things like Utter End, Dig Through Time, uh, Planar Outburst, and Search of Righteousness. Damage already done, though, I think. Yeah. Uh, I mean, down to seven already This yeah. the, from the Gnarled and the Warden. And, and, that's, and I think that's the Jace? extent of what Josh has to offer here, as he's stuck on land four uh, and does not commit anything else. Right. Alex as well. Stuck around three lands, as yeah, all he can do is really play a Jace. Oh, geez. I'm gonna go ahead and draw two, and probably dig myself out of this land screw. Finds a forest. Uh, it's not a black source though. Let's see what he draws off the top. It's we, gonna be a Tassie. It's all right, we got a black source. Oh, we do. I'm sorry, we have a land more waste. Yeah, it's a little Forgive painful, me. but we'll we'll manage. Oh, uh, I can get aggressive here, and I can drop this Tasker. I wouldn't. I'd be okay with that. We can drop Tassie. We can level up Warden. I mean, oh, we could play Gideon. Play Gideon. God, there's a ton of, or another, or a Rhino. I yeah, mean, yeah, we've we've got some action here. Alex's gonna be down to five. Rhino seems good if we have one. Gideon's gonna take the field and most likely make an ally token. Seems seems like a pretty solid play. Yeah. Gideon himself a fairly good threat. Alex's gonna draw, not find any land. He's gonna scoop it up. Josh McLean's gonna take this two-one over Mr. Pressig. Yeah, and we, again. Is Abzan Aggro a, back, baby? Is a that fortunate, what it is? A fortunate um, series of plays there for Josh sure. where uh, Alex just couldn't interact with what he played. Yeah, I it mean, was very tough. It's, it's good foresight for Josh uh, to play the way he did. Uh, I think, yeah. I think once again, Abzan, I, I said it a lot before and I'll say it again, the, the cards that were printed in cons block for Abzan are ridiculous. Yes. Like, they are absolutely amazing. Sure, Jeskai has some great cards. Oju Dice Command has found its its time, but it needed Jace. If mm-hmm. you think about just the power level per mana cost of the cards in the Abzan Aggro deck, they're nuts. Oh, they're like, all all of them are insane. All strictly great. Yeah, just right. in, in terms I, of what you're playing. 